Hello YouTube, welcome to Dave Green's Street View Show. My guest today is the one and only Marlon Davis. Now you may have seen Marlon on Comedy Central's Live at the Comedy Store and Sean Walsh's Comedy Spectacular. How are you doing Marlon? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks for coming and doing my show. Yeah, thanks for having me. You want to you wanna look at your hometown? Yeah, let's go for this. Alright, let's teleport. Feel that God right Oh now. my God. Oh my God, wow. Who are these guys? Where uh, is this? Where are we in Mar This in here Mar is Stonebridge, Northwest London. I don't know whose clothes those are, <laughs> um, but somebody's been kicked out of their house, I presume, <laughs> by somebody. Wow. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, it's changed a lot. What you can actually see there is actually new townhouses. What we used to have was big, huge tower blocks that used to erect up into the sky. It was amazing. Um, such a wonderful sense of community. Every time I come back down here, I feel energised, yes, because um, this is where you were brought up and your hopes, your dreams and stuff, and it was like, yeah, it's always, always makes me feel good coming back around this way. And what about bad things? What were the bad things about growing up in this area? Um, uh, There would possibly be, uh, it's because it was a council estate, um, and you've got those sort of stigmas that's actually come from it as well but I think everyone that comes from this place I don't think they really carry that at all no you just get on with whatever you need to get on with there's a lot of successful people that come from this area so but were you conscious of that is that something in retrospect you're looking back on or were you conscious of that stigma at the time you did you felt it and I think as a uh, a young or a teenager, I think you kind of wore it as a badge of honour. So it's like, oh, like I'm from Stonebridge. Yeah, yeah. You know, like oh, my voice got a little bit deeper there, but like I was from there. So, you know, like you have that kind of bravado, like you can't mess with me because I'm from there. And you wear it, but after a while, you're like, no, it's, it is whatever it is. You're an individual. It's fine. So I think we can go to our next place now, which is where you're living now. Uh, Where is this? Completely different. This uh, <laughs> looks like... This is pretty different. <laughs> I can like see you, like, you can into see the lots, distance. You can see lots around there. Um, this is this is High Wycombe. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of uh, greenery. It's completely different from the tower blocks that I used to see. And is this the first place up. you've lived outside London? It is, yeah. Okay. And how are you finding that adjusting? Um... You just do. I mean, what I don't like about it is that people actually speak to you. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't like well, that. Well, like strangers, you mean? Well, yeah, that's what they yeah, are. Well, it's, it's, just, it's gross. I don't like that at all. And they all ask me questions like, oh, where are you from? And uh, I was like, oh, I'm from London. And I was like, oh, you're from London, are you? I was like, oh, yeah, really? from London. What oh, would you like living in London? And I was like, oh, that's fine. This isn't even that far away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I'm telling them. And I was like, you know, it's like, oh my God, no, I couldn't live in London. There's too much, too much going on in London. And I was like, what? You've got all this stuff that's around here. You've got these trees. And I was like, oh, that's a nice tree. Because, <laughs> no, they've got more of them. They've got, uh, they've got lots of trees. And he goes, yeah, you don't have trees. Of course you have trees in London. But yeah, but you've got more trees here. And I was like, yeah, those look like trees. Fantastic. And he goes, oh, it's just, <laughs> do that. And I goes, what, do what? <laughs> And I was like, that's air. And I goes, yeah, there's air everywhere, but it's not as clean. It's not as clean as around here, isn't it? And I goes, yeah. And I goes, it's so great around here. And he goes, you know what the best thing about it? And I was like, what is it? It's 20 minutes train ride from London. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, how you can feel a bit, how great is a place? And you're shitting all over London and you're telling me how great it is because it's close to London. Now we're going to go to the next place, which is a place with a happy memory. Happy memory. Happy times. Oh Who's my this? God. Wow. I don't think she was your happy memory, was she? But uh, maybe she was. Maybe she was my happy memory. That's She's still in that same place there right now. This is Jamaica. All right. This is Kingston. So Jamaica. this is not... Jamaica isn't properly on Street View, so this is just a Wonder random... Wonder why. This is... Wonder why. God knows, mate. So well, what, what happened here? What um? In Jamaica... It was a place where I had my first kiss. With her, yeah? Yeah, she's probably, and she's got a baby <laughs> now. She's that baby. She's it got was, baby it was now. Awkward, it, was it, was, it was a passionate kiss. <laughs> one thing led to another. That's, what, that's all I need. That's how fertile you are, Marlon. <laughs> Just one kiss. That's what it is. One kiss would do. But, um, 
Yeah. Well, now this is cute. This is a cute memory. What? So what happened? We'll forget about her. What happened? Just look at that sunset. You tell me about your first kiss. And I'll try not to get too aroused. Um. Well, so I was in Jamaica, and I was like, it wasn't my mission. It was just I happened. I met a nice girl, um, from the church. Um. Remember her name? Her name would have been Latoya. Latoya Latanya. And um, she was lovely. She was a lovely girl. And she used to come and visit me at my grandmother's. Um, I was over there with my dad as well. So my dad knew what was going on. He was like, oh, this girl, she likes you. And he gave me some money. He said, uh, you can treat her. Take her out somewhere nice. And I took her to the finest establishment McDonald's took her to McDonald's and um, she loved it and we was walking back from the McDonald's and she said that she really likes me and I said I'd like her too and I walked her back to her house where she lives which was a couple of streets away from my grandmother's and we had a kiss there we pulled me in we we kissed I turned my head this way because I've seen people do that in the movies to be honest the kiss was probably awful it's probably it's disgusting like it was a lot of tongue and it was and your hand of, was in the way and, <laughs> and, 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 and. <laughs> definitely it was just, it was horrible I mean I've learned since then how to kiss but like I don't know so that's my happiest memory it's probably her worst from that kiss um, yeah that's, that's what it is I guess so anytime you go back to the same space it brings that back to me it evokes that a happy time so thank you very much for bringing me back to there's no problem that. that was that was quite romantic thank you could have had some music playing as well in the background we'll add it we'll add it in the, <laughs> we'll add some music in the edit remember that Dave add that music boom boom cut in a two. <laughs> So now we're going to go to the next place, which is right. your least favourite place in the world. Ah, my God. Not amigos. This place. Ah, look at all that. And there's people out. <laughs> what are they doing? Is that a guy on the phone or is he billing up weed outside the shop? I don't actually know. Oh, you go scroll in. We're not police. Oh, he's on the phone. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. This place here. Active. Right. I went in there once. Just once. Never again. Every time I'm near this area, I get chills. I get chills of what happened to me in this shop. As you can see right there and then, I don't know what day it was, but the shop is packed. It's a packed shop. It's barbers. You go there for grooming. As you can see with my head right now, I've been groomed recently. Um, recently. Looks right? very nice. Thank you very much. Thanks. But it wouldn't look that nice if I went to this place. Because let me tell you a story about what happened when I went into this place. There is a shop with packs just like this. And there is a barber right at the back. Um, it was a gentleman. And I walked into the shop and the place was packed. And I was like, I'm going to be in here for ages. It's going to be like a good couple of hours. And he saw me and he went, trim. And implying, do you want a haircut? And I said, yeah. And he goes, sit right here. So I walked across diagonally to where his seat was and I think I saw people do this they started shuffling people that was in yeah, the shop yeah, yeah. and there was one one someone went I'll do it like that to you to yeah you. but I was like forever I thought he was just pissed off because he's been in there for that long yeah, and yeah, he yeah, hasn't yeah. been given a seat yet oh okay so I you got the bad hairdresser I, I didn't know <laughs> so I'm in there he has turned my face Away from the mirror, so I can't see what's going on. So when he moves me, just swivel the chair this way. So I'm facing that's the a direction. Bad, that's a bad sign. Of, there's an audience now, yeah, and they're yeah. all laughing. And uh, some people are on their phones. Probably this guy, taking pictures and probably fucking sending it to his friends. <laughs> oh my god, that's what's going on. Why, do they, why do they employ that guy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't even know if he was actually a barber. He might have just been someone that's just hanging <laughs> out there and thought, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to try and get a quick £10. 
I don't know. So he turned around and he's like, he's like, I'm done. He's finished, right? And I was just sat in a chair, pissed off. Now I'm a happy person most of the time. But my face was like, mm. he's like, what's the problem? And I goes, you, you messed up my head. And he goes, it will grow back. <laughs> I said, what do you mean it will grow back? I know hair grows back, but it's supposed to be groomed. That's why I'm in here, for it to be groomed. Of course it's going to be grow back. I want it styled in a way, you know, I was like, what the hell? Of course it's going to grow back. And he's like, he'll grow back. And he goes, so what? So what? So like he's, now he feels like he's going to square up to me. Now, I'm sat down in a chair. Now he's in a position of authority because he's standing and he's got scissors in his hands and other tools that could fuck me up. But I'm pissed off because what he's just done to my head. So I'm stood up myself. And he goes, what? You're not going to pay me? And I said, no, nah, I'm not going to pay you for this. And he goes, you're going to pay me? You know, I goes, I'm not going to pay you for this. And um, he he said, what are you going to do then? And I said, my head's fucked. And then there was another barber that was there. And he goes, um, don't worry, I can fix it. And then he looked at it. He came and looked at it and he goes, I don't think I can. <laughs> God. God. So I left that shop and I had to go and buy a hat. That's what happened. <laughs> so I've never been back in that shop again. Oh my god! I say we get out of here because I can. Yeah, feel it. I can tell it's making you upset. <laughs> so now, 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 hang on. Now we're going to go to the next place, which is where you did your first stand-up gig. Yeah. Oh. Blue Post. The Blue Post. That's so it. How, how right was there. it, Marlon? How was your first first gig? Um. Yeah. It was wasn't what I expected it to be. To no, be didn't, no, didn't smash it out of the park? No, it didn't smash anything out of the park. It was just, for me, the achievement was just actually getting on stage and doing it. I went to this place. There's a guy called um, Phil Klein who used to run, I think he ran a gig there every day. Really? Seven days. I met Phil and I told him, look, I, re- I really want to do stand-up comedy. He goes, do you? And I said, yeah. And he goes, Right, what you need to do is write five minutes of material. And once you've got that, come back and I'll put you on. And I went, sure. And I uh, went away and wrote what I thought was five minutes of material. And um, kept on going back. Then he goes, you ready? He goes, nah, I'm not ready yet. And I used to see guys like um, it was Nina Benjamin and Ava Vidal was just um, like coming up as well. So yeah, I remember yeah, seeing yeah. her and I was like, oh my and God. And how, how old were you when you started? I was 23. Okay. So like, yeah, so I was like, oh my God, wow. And there's like, there's Lee Mack came in there one time as well. And they, I was like, oh, fucking, it's like Lee Mack from the telly. Like, wow. Yeah, yeah. And he was on there and he was trying out new material. And I don't know if there was such a thing as new material. And the material wasn't good. And he wasn't getting the response that he thought what well, he should have been getting. Because he was just trying it out for the first yeah, time. Yeah, and yeah. I went, well, if he's on the telly, and he's he seems to be okay. So it's not perfect. And I was well, like, I definitely can try this now. I definitely can do this. And I remember seeing Ninia Benjamin, it was Patrick Monahan as well. And Patrick was um, enthusiastic with it. So I said, yeah, man, you can. He's like really encouraging. He's like, you can do it. You can do it. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. So the next week I went to the Blue Post, and I stood up on stage. And the thing about it, they never used to have a microphone. Oh, so okay, yeah, he yeah. was just talking a cappella to a room and um, it was horrible. The whole thing was just a complete mess. I think, it was, like I said, it was supposed to do five minutes. I think I did three. Oh, really? And Phil was like, just come off, mate. Just come off. It's like, it's not for you. So I didn't matter because I went out and when I left this place, I was like, I've done it. I've done it. I was just buzzing. It's buzzing. And then I recorded it, obviously, and listened back to it. Um, and I was like, yeah, it's, just, it's not so good. It's not so good. But I went back, listened to the recording and went back the next week, not to this place, to another one. And it was great. I had a great response. I think I did a whole 10 minutes there and never looked back. Loved it. Now we can go to the next place, which is a place with a life-changing moment. Oh, my God. Yes, this is a life-changing moment for me. 
this path which way do you go to the left to the right and i chose to go to the left now this is um norfolk there park norfolk park hospital um which is where my son was born and was how, how old baby. is he now your, your he's son? nine years old now my wow. son is. this was nine years ago and um, he came in here it wasn't our plan to come to this hospital she had a birth plan to go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but she, we didn't make it. How did you end up here? It's the nearest hospital to us. <laughs> she waited But to why go. didn't she want to go there? Yeah, she, no was like, oh, no. she was like, oh, no. she didn't like how it she looked. Like you know, it, there's no. too much um, road works that's going <laughs> yeah. on. And, you know, there's a parcel force vans. She didn't like it. She didn't like the fact that the lamppost shadows. And, you know, she, was like, she, nah, she just said she didn't want to come to this hospital at all. Uh, but they did a good job. They delivered our son, and um, yeah, it was we was in there for like twenty nine hours, and I was up for all of it as well. Um, I did. Were you there? Were you in the room? I was in the room. Yeah, I was in the room, and uh, the only time I left was to get some food. So I went, got in Lando's. I got her some as well. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. the baby. Nah, no. he, 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 he had some milk coming, didn't he? He had some milk coming. So I had a little bit of that, and uh, yeah, it was something else. It's, it's so how, how does it feel looking at it now? Does it bring back memories? Yeah, this changed everything for me. What I knew from that point on. So once he was born, there's that my life was never my own anymore. Um, you've got someone that depends on you, and um, you can't go on holidays. Can't go on them holidays that you wanted to go to go on. It was just all about him. Everything changed though. Like I remember like um leaving the place and I said like I wanted to get some clothes or some trainers or whatever. Everything stopped. I was like, nah. It's all about him. Everything that I have, I have to invest into him. So Yeah. It's that that's the place. Now we're gonna go to a place that scares you, Marlon. Yeah. Sure. Ready to be scared? Thing. Oh my god! And I think this is Eltham, right? Well, yeah, you, you. I don't know. No, where I think this is. I know why you've brought us here, but why, why, um, why, why Eltham? I've never been to Eltham before. I've just seen it, and I thought, nah, never ever gonna go there. I'm scared to go there. And as you can see, there's a bus. Um, <laughs> there's a bus right there. It's because of what happened to Stephen Lawrence uh, many years ago, which was in the nineties, and um, it just invokes. A lot of, uh, I feel for him, uh, his family, people, and whatever. For people that don't know, what was what happened to Stephen Lawrence? And Stephen Lawrence was murdered. Um, in Elton, he was stabbed by a gang of youths. It was this it was a racist attack. So a gang of white youths. Um, some of them is in prison. Some of them are still out of prison, and it's still ongoing. As to what actually happened with him, his people being convicted, I don't know. It's a travesty. And I thought to myself, nah, never going there. Well, I think my parents, everyone was just really caged up at that, at that time. And that's As something that's still going felt on now, right? Yeah, it's still going on. What about you personally? Have you ever I've never been experienced to this place. any. What, racism? Racism. Oh, well, yeah. That's a, that's a massive uh, question. Make you take Can we go to, to all the places? <laughs> all, every single one of them. Um, go a couple of hours. Ah, you just you just do. Um, but I mean, in the street like that, something that's. I can tell you what happened to me. The last time I felt racism was I was on a train um, to Manchester on the weekend, and we pulled up in Wolverhampton, and a police officer got on the train, a transport police officer. And they asked me to jump off the train. I said, why? He goes, because you fit a description of somebody that's done something to somebody in Birmingham. And I goes, I'm from London. Because can you show me your ticket? And I goes, um, yeah. And it was on one of those ones on your mobile phone. And he goes, right, well, you're going to have to come off this train. I goes, I'm not going to come off this train. I've got no grounds for him. You're taking me off this train for like I need to get to Manchester. This is a 
Were you on your way to a gig? Well, yeah. Um, so he goes, Val, you're going to have to come off this train. And I goes, I'm not coming off this train. She says, you don't get off this train. No one else is moving. So the whole carriage turned around and looked oh, at me and went, God. fucking make me off the train. Like, I was like, no, I'm not getting off. I don't care. And then a second police officer came on. And when the second one came on, he was like, well, okay. And he goes, can you please come off, please? And we'll let you back on the next train. So they let me off the train. I said, what's the problem? They said, well, as you said, you fit a description of someone that assaulted somebody in Birmingham. You assaulted a cleaner. Because well, that's got nothing to do with me. They goes, right, we've got CCTV. And I goes, well, you should have some of me boarding this train. They goes, well, if there's CCTV and you fit the description. And I goes, what's this about? I said, goes, can you come to the station? I goes, nah, you're not going to, that's, no. Nah, you're not going to get me to He goes, look, can you please just come to the station? We'll just talk about it there. So we came off the train platform. The station, the station's right next to um, the Wolverhampton train station. So I go there. They don't arrest me. They have a word with me. And they say, there's some CCTV. And they took my details. And they said, look, if it is you, we'll get in contact. And I go, this is... And I goes, well, I've been swearing anyway, but I was just like, this is nonsense. And he goes, what are you doing? Where are you travelling to? I told him where I was travelling to, what I'm doing. And he goes, all right, fine. Um, and then one of the officers recognised me as well. And he went, are you a comedian? I said, yeah. And he goes, I've seen you before. And I goes, yeah. He goes, why are you here? And I goes, because they said I fit the description of somebody. And I was oh, I don't know. I don't know yet. So they let me go anyway, and they put me on the train. <laughs> and I got on the next train and went to Manchester. And they called me up. And they apologised. And they said, sorry for bullying you off the train. We looked at the CCTV and it wasn't you. And I goes, I know it wasn't me. <laughs> and I goes, yeah, but could you accept our apology, please? I mean, we did something that we actually have to do just in case, but I goes, but this sounds ridiculous and it's definitely going to go in my set for this evening. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's one thing for sure. And they were like... What did they say to that? And they, they, said, they said, well, yeah, it's funny. And I, was, <laughs> and I told I told the audience and they, they laughed at it as well, but I was just like, how... It's... You can say, is that racist? But it's just it. Who is this other person? I don't know who this other person was. If he's Chinese, then it's different. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. he just fit a description. Which and is because, what? A black guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I don't know size. Is he wearing the same clothes as me? Like, what? And that just happens. And would that happen to anyone else? And if they do, I guess maybe they're unlucky, but it's just, it seems like this happens all of the time. And it's something that we actually have to live with or deal with. And you shouldn't have to, but you just do. So we're almost at the end, Marlon. Yeah. And as you know, this show is all about memories and places. And some of the, some of the memories we've spoken about have been from like ages ago. Yeah. So what I'd like to do now is go back in time and revisit some of these places. Okay. And now, Marlon, we're going to go all the way back in time. And we're going to go back to your hometown. Yep. And with hindsight now, like, what if you saw the Marlon of the past? Yeah. If you saw little Marlon walking down here, what what advice would you give him? Don't worry about any negativity about this area at all. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. You can swim ten meters if you want to. Um, you can be a stand-up comedian if you want to. There's no limits. Just go out there and just do it. And is that before you were saying there was like a certain type of stigma coming from this sort of area? Yeah. Is that something you would say to your young self about that? My young self would have, would have known. Um, mm. It's just because of how I was brought up as well. My parents were amazing with me with that in terms of building your self esteem. Um, yeah, you could just do whatever it is that you want to do. And it's not just myself, it could just be my friends, whoever it is that's around us. Um, you can do whatever it is that you want to do just because you're in this place doesn't mean you are that place alright I think that'd be a good place to end it 
Thanks for coming on the show, Marlon. Well, thanks for having me. It's been really cool. Let's zoom out. This has been Dave Green's well, Street View Show. He's well, been Marlon Davis. Well, how is this going? Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.